All right, thank you, Johnny, for that wonderful uh, talk for our attendees uh, today. And thank you for kickstarting our conference. Uh, of course, our talent acquisition concave, the first one for the day. Uh, next up, everyone, we have uh, the second keynote session, uh, which is on inclusive workplace culture, uh, leading and sustaining culture transformation. Now for this, our panelists are Keshav R. Murugesh, Group CEO, WNS Global Services, Vaishali Sinha, Chief Sustainability, CSR, and Communications Officer, Founding Chair, Renew Foundation. And this discussion will be moderated by Nick Shat, Chief Global Development Officer, Shaun. Over to you, Nick. Thank you very much, Neha. And thank you all for joining us for Sherm Edge. You know, I think we, um, we have a tight time schedule today and I think we should just jump right into it. So I would like to start by asking each of our panelists are, uh, in this power talk today, tell us a little bit about their organization and the culture transformation that they have had to achieve uh, as part of the response to COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, so with that, Vaishali, maybe I can ask you to start. Vaishali, you are on mute. You're muted, Vaishali. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me for these uh, conversations. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, here with you, Nick uh, and Keshav. Uh, you know, let me start by telling you a little bit about Renew. Renew Power is uh, a renewable energy company. It's an independent power producer. Uh, one of the leading uh, ones in India. We generate close to six gigawatts of clean energy. Uh, we have a pan-India presence and uh, employ close to about 1,300 people uh, across India. Um, the unique thing I often say about Renew is that we have a global pool of investors and we operate in the remotest parts of our country. And so therefore our engagement um, is uh, with people in remote India, but at, if you look at our corporate offices, we have people from around the world engaged making this happen. So it's a pretty sort of diverse set of engagements we have. Uh, during COVID times, I think um, it's really been uh, an eye-opener. It's been a great learning experience for our organization. As an organization, we really did not have a work-from-home culture. It was, you know, we do a lot of infra-related work, a lot of site-related work. A lot of it is global travel. So suddenly to kind of get back, get into our rooms, in our homes and not step out was quite a challenge and to stay connected with everybody. But we are an essential services company, so we are grateful. So, uh, the, so sort of the rules were a little bit easier for us. So our sites remained working up and running, but we had to make sure that the safety protocol was in place. So in a period of a week to two weeks, we ensured that we got everything executed from lining up guest houses to getting people housed in safe areas and having a cycle of, you know, two sets of people, you know, going in backups and all of that. All of it was done in two weeks and, you know, it worked really well uh, in our sites. And, um, you know, that brings me to the point that why did it work? You know, it worked because we probably had a solid set of, uh, you know, employees who were used to doing things, different things at different points in time. And so they had that resilience in them. You know, every time at Renew, if I look back at our journey, you know, we've had to change course and people have had to be ready to be able to change that course because that's, that is survival at Renew Power. So whether it is an internal requirement, whether it is a business driven requirement or whether it is a pandemic driven requirement, uh, what I take out of this is that I think when you build a resilient company, whether any needs uh, internal, external, you know, out of your control, people will step up. And that's what we saw happening at Renew. So it's important once you try and build a culture of innovation and, um, you know, um, challenge and entrepreneurship, um, you build resilience. And that's what we saw at Renew, even in our headquarters, you know, we, we all work from home. 
we are on the call from nine. That's the not so nice part, but we are still effective. We are on calls a lot because every time you want to talk to somebody, you can't walk into a room. But people want to engage and they want to stay connected. So we are spending a lot of our time just catching up on Zooms and WhatsApp. But our work is, I would say, ninety-five percent as it was when we were working from the office. And so we love our office, and we really wonder that you know is that going to be relevant post COVID days? And that thought is not a great one because I know we want to get back to work. I'll stop here, um, and um, I'll be able to answer any other uh, question. Um, well, you know, we talk about a very quick culture shift here, and I want to come back to that. But Keshav, let me turn to you and ask you at um, at WNS Global Service. How did you see this um, this shift in the most recent period, and how and how did that impact your culture, or how did your culture impact it? Sure. So really good to be with uh, you guys, uh, Vaishali and Nick. And you know, as you know, WNS is a global BPM company. We are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. We are 40, 43,000 people globally. We operate from sixteen countries, sixty one de development centers. And we provide mission critical services to some of the greatest brands across the world. I'm fortunate I happen to run the company out of uh, Mumbai, but get to travel a lot and meet with my employees all over the world. You know, uh, you know if you step back, remember what uh, Simon Sinek said. He said customers will never love a company unless the employees love it first, right? And that is something that, you know, we have focused on a lot at this company. If you just look at uh, the mission of the company, it's all about we enable our clients to outperform with our passion for service and innovation. And then the values of the company are what we call the circle, client first, integrity, respect, collaboration, learning, and excellence. And during COVID, all of this came together extremely well because every one of our 43 or 44,000 employees across the globe understood perfectly what the values were and how those values were required to deliver what our mission you know, statement was all about. And the reality is we provide mission critical services, pandemic or no pandemic. You know, the lights have to be kept on. The topmost companies in the world have to keep working. I also happen to be the chairman of NASCOM, which is India's premier you know, technology body at that point in time. Uh, at WNS, we saw the signs, we quickly started planning to move uh, desktops and laptops and you know, accessories to people's homes. We made people feel a part of a much bigger cause, right? And for us, it was really seamless. But I can tell you, we also got our people involved in the bigger issue of doing it for India as well, because at that point in time, I was responsible for moving close to three and a half million desktops in a matter of two weeks for every company you know, in the industry. And I can tell you the only way that this happened was because of the enabling culture we created, the absolute clarity about the mission of the company, the absolute alignment with the values in the company, and the fact that every person at this company understood how important they were in the overall scheme of things, and more importantly, how important they were to make sure that customers, businesses, and like Vaishali said, the most critical essential services across the world were kept on and uh, were running because of WNS's uh, initiatives. No, that's, I mean, it's an amazing amount of work to accomplish in such a short period of time. And um, we'll come back to that in a moment. Vaishali, let me ask you, you mentioned resilience a couple of times in your first set of comments as one of the key cultural elements that helped you navigate this period. What were some of the other aspects of your culture at Renew that helped move you forward and helped you accomplish what you did so quickly? You know, uh, a bunch of things. Um, you know, I would say, uh, you know, uh, the common purpose. You know, we all... We all knew that we had to continue without a break, right? So therefore, um, you know, just the desire, I think, uh, you know, in everybody to to be able to continue and settle in well. So as Keshav rightly pointed out, you know, the role our IT team uh, played, 
and the engagement and the communication of our leadership team we are a pan india organization to ensure that all of what we discussed in our boardroom got quickly disseminated and so the the power of communication you know we all tend to get very involved in our own respective departments and silos but you know we had all these kind of war room sort of meetings happening multiple times a day during those few days before you know we didn't know what was going to happen i think none of us really expected the severity of the lockdown i mean none of us expected we thought we'll be like you know back uh, back in a couple of weeks so we were all trying to but then the whole system worked with a vision and a backup plan for things to be okay bad and terrible and so we had that plan so long term thinking vision communication from management through different layers and levels of the company all the way to our sites and that connect i think was very helpful we had many town halls during the first few weeks of our uh, of the crisis where we were in touch with the entire organization we were in touch with small groups and i think that gave uh, everybody a great deal of comfort that uh, we were in this together and uh, that uh, you know we were going to work together to make it work and uh, i think the care uh, and the, the compassion and uh, the fact that safety of our employees was our number one goal during those times work or no work but each and every employee at renew had to be safe and so the amount of priority we gave to that i think uh, really resonated with the employees uh, because there was a sense of gratitude and a sense of appreciation and then we were very aware with after like let's say a month after the lockdown uh, there were issues around people facing issues in their home environment mm. so we connected through a lot of informal sessions like we had a stand up we had the children perform and everybody from renew dialed in and joined that so we kind of came together and a lot of people said that uh, we felt more connected than we have ever done so i think the softer elements of the organization the hot part of the organization which i must confess we don't have a lot of time for on a regular work day i think really resonated with renewers so some of these elements really played an important role in ensuring we were together we didn't feel uh, alone left out isolated and that really connected people with their work to perform and to get things done so you extended caring not just from the customers but back to the customers but back into your own team to yeah. the employees and their families which which helped build that sense of common purpose and obviously you used a cultural value of communication as well um by shali i know you have a tight schedule so if you can stay as long as you can stay we would love to have you as part of this conversation um kishav i would like to ask you the same question though. what were some of the cultural elements that you felt you referred to the values of wns as a key factor in the the culture that helps sustain you through this can you be a little more specific about some of those cultural elements sure so first and foremost you know for us really this was like a supernova 2x kind of a moment when this happened there was no planning uh in india for example we had a 3 and a half hour notice but as i mentioned we operate from 16 countries and therefore we saw the trends coming in and started preparing maybe a week before uh most others but the reality is that the pandemic actually brought forward the future uh in a matter of a few hours you know all of us were talking about digital with to our clients all of us were talking about how technology would transform them but the reality is covid-19 and the way we responded and again i'm very proud of my 43000 people across the globe the way they responded made sure that whatever were in the plans or were in the works over the next few quarters actually happened in a matter of a week or two right so first and foremost in terms of culture everyone at the company understood that we were focused on the trifecta vaishali so elegantly spoke about the communication and the town hall and stuff like that obviously we had to do the same as well uh, and make sure it was seamless but the trifecta of ensuring that people understood that employee safety was of paramount importance followed by the fact that we had to keep the lights on for our clients irrespective of what the challenges were and at the same time you know focus on uh making sure that we were ready for a new changed model 
where work from home was going to be blended into whatever operating model uh, you know the industry will provide. And the reality is, this is not something that is uh, ending in in a month or two. We are preparing for a twelve to eighteen month haul, if you ask me. We worked very closely with the government in uh, different countries, ensured that all extensions that we needed from an industry point of view was given, and employees could actually work you know, safely and securely from home. Inside the company, we created very strong SOPs. So people understood that if they even had to come back, and hardly 5 or 6% of our employees are now back at the office, they understood that safety was paramount. Um, I must say that right now, our focus is to send out strong messages to our clients around the fact that we're helping them hyper surge in terms of te new technology led models. And we're also bringing out in the marketplace a new term uh, for us called hyper lead, where we're using the experiences that we've built here to enable our employees to help clients lead in terms of their initiative. And I can tell you all of this has worked. You know, uh, March 22nd is when it hit us. And uh, we guided the market to, uh, you know, reasonably poor uh, outcomes for the quarter. But the reality is when we ended the quarter, WNS's numbers were significantly higher than what the market expected. And the earning per share was almost 35 cents higher than the market. And that clearly shows how well the employees aligned and the fact that they understand that the culture of performance as well as uh, being an empathetic organization really works. That's amazing performance, especially during this period and with these challenges. And you raise an interesting point. Vaishali, let me come back to you and ask a, a similar point to what um, Kishav just mentioned. As you look to the future, what do you see changing in Renew's culture based on what you've learned during this most recent period? You know, I think we've all learned uh, really a lot. Um, you know, we've talked about resilience. Uh, definitely, it's uh, uh, going to be um, give a lot of confidence, I think, reinforce our confidence. Um, you know, I, I, I highlighted that at Renew, you know, we've always had to keep pivoting uh, with respect to different challenges, new core parts we've had to take just to, you know, keep growing at the rate at which we are. So uh, I think we'll definitely be a better bonded entity. I think we've definitely learned how to work effectively from home. We've uh, learned, I think we will be uh, burning a lot less uh, jet fuel. I think everybody was on a plane without uh, blinking. I think there's so much uh, thought and, uh, you know, we can apply there. There's so much possible, Nick. I'd love to meet you and I have a glass of wine together, uh, you know, wherever you are in D.C., and with Keshav in Mumbai, but um, you know we can decrease the proportion. Like we don't have, we can do it once a year, maybe not twelve times a year. So things like that, you know, I think we can do a lot in an environmentally friendly manner. We can run businesses way more sustainably, and uh, I think we can rely a lot more on local resources and get the most out of it as well. And as I said, our, our bonding not only in our immediate ecosystem, but with the larger ecosystem is possible with virtual interactions. So I think we can get a lot more uh, done. And I think the biggest thing uh, we have learned as a company uh, is not only to value each other beyond our roles in the organization, but to value them for just having a normal uh, day, a normal life and uh, just um, uh, the joy I think everybody is getting by being with their family and being able to do a lot at work as well. So that work-life balance, I think we'll definitely take forward as well in different ways. We'll work harder to make this remote working a more, of a, a more sustainable way of working, I think, in sustainable in the sense of being more continuous for our organization. And um, yeah, I think those are the key takeaways as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to log off now, but it was a pleasure uh, so, you know, being here today, all the best and stay safe. Thank you very much. And awesome. I love your optimistic view of the future. Okay. So, thank, thank you. you Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Keisha, let me, uh, let me come back to you because you, if, if I remember correctly, you have been at WNS now for 10 years. Um, tell me 
how you got the culture in place that enabled you to do what you have done in the recent months. Because as I understand it, the company was not in this shape when you arrived 10 years ago. What did you have to do? So Nick, you know, I could spend one hour talking about uh, <laughs> that, but I'll try and accelerate the discussion. Uh, so first and foremost, I must, you know, mention the role of my leaders that, you know, I surround myself with. And I'm, I'm famous for saying that I surround myself with people and leaders who are far smarter than me. So that's the first secret sauce I would uh, put out there. And the second is the role of my HR team and my HR leader in particular in terms of just being my right-hand business partner, not really a support partner, but a business partner, because this business is all about people and culture. And let me tell you, if I went, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, rewinded 10 years, when I came into the company, there were a lot of surprises for me. And I jokingly used to say that WNS stood for, uh, you know, work never stops or we never sleep. <laughs> it actually meant something else. And accelerate that 10 years, and today we refer to WNS as we nurture specialists, and more recently, winning never stops. You know, at a at a time of pandemic where the stock price is once again heading for a lifetime high, performance is at a, a lifetime high, and things like that. It's a it's a very very you know good moment for all of us. But when you look at the interim period, I can tell you that the way we involve people in first of all, understanding the mission of the company, the values and what we stood for, how these were integrated and how even the appraisal, reward, recognition systems were all enmeshed into all of this. And then having our leaders and senior team members led by you know, our chief operating officer, our chief people officer, our CFO, as well as others travel the globe. You know, Vaishali said she would love to have a drink with me in Mumbai. I frankly am never in Mumbai, right? <laughs> I'm all the time out. I have no clients in India. I just run the company from India because the large army is in India, right? But I actually am sp I spend most of my time out and that's exactly what my uh, leaders do as well. So town halls, interacting with people, helping them understand their importance and their role, involving the top 40 people as well as people across different dimensions of the company in terms of strategy. Right? We run something called the uh, uh, Seven Samurai Summit for the last 10 years. And we have 40 people coming in. They come from across the organization. We plan the strategy. We plan execution plans. We refresh them every single year. And I think that is what has made this company what it is. Right? We have an organization structure, but it is very flat. And everyone knows in the room, you know, who is senior to the other. But the reality is we allow, you know, free thinking and we allow people to exchange points of view. And I think that is the culture that has enabled this company to be where it is. Right. And I'm, I'm pretty certain that even today, uh, even based on where, you know, the kind of achievements we've already uh, uh, received and the accolades we've received, this is just the start of the next phase of superior growth for WMS based on the building blocks that we have created here. No, this is a, a fantastic story. And as you say, we could talk for hours about any single part of this. Unfortunately, we need to wrap up because we are on a, on a schedule here at Sherm Edge. But I want to emphasize two points. First, it warms my heart to um, hear you talk about the central role of your HR leaders as part of this, because HR in service cultures is absolutely critical. Equally importantly, the culture of transformation that we're talking about here, it's all the work that you did leading up to this point that enabled your exemplary performance during this period of time. A crisis is not the time to transform culture. A crisis is the time that you depend on a strong culture to get you through. So thank you very much. And it has uh, been a pleasure speaking with you, Kishav. Vaishali, thank you. I know you've already left the studio, but, no, thank, but thank, thank you very, you very much. much. And, and uh, Niha, I think we're turning it back to you. Great pleasure.